All right, everybody, come on in. Let's get started. Okay, so before I start uh, addressing the questions that you presented uh, to me about wedding psychology issues, I want to go over five basic principles of psychiatry or psychology that you can apply in any and every situation. One, the top five stressors in life. Number two, changes in finances especially a change in your job or a loss of your job. I know from my professional experience, women getting married are always concerned about their weight. So when you look at those top five stressors in your life, probably most, if not all, are going to be rearing their ugly heads during the process of planning your wedding. We as people, are made up of those millions and millions of experiences that we've had over our lifetimes that make our window through which we see the world unique. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So this can be extremely valuable to you as the, the wedding day event approaches and that stress levels is starting to rise. Dreams do two things. One, they continue working on unresolved issues that have come up during the day. Make that setting conducive to establishing rapport. Get out from behind your desk, go sit on the other side, make sure there's more than one chair. Perhaps you um, work out of your car so you're on the road all the time. A great way to do this is meet people in a public setting. So for example, if this was a restaurant table, don't sit across the table from the individual. Put them corner to corner and move your chair out a bit. Try to stay away from asking what we call closed-ended questions, which are who, what, where, how, and why. Ask open-ended questions. Tell me about uh, where you grew up, what it was like. Let's talk a bit about your relationship with the groom. Moments of silence are big motivators. Empathy means you, the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand and even feel what they're going through and what they're experiencing. Get rid of all the little stuff, take the fundamental essence that you know is important, condense it down and say, so if I understand correctly, X, Y, Z, and just review. So this is what we talked about before, this one, this one, this one, and Invariably you'll hear, oh, that reminds me, after we left last time, I thought of, you're going to get more information. As time progresses in our working together with somebody, be it in a, in a treatment relationship or in your case as a consultant, the ideas and concepts that someone has, let's say, about their wedding, it's going to change over time. That's that creeping. It's creeping away from where you started out. There's obvious evidence that they've had anger management issues before, or even drug or alcohol issues, which raise the risk for anybody. Jealousy is an easy provocator of violence. So just make yourself safe, and there's some very easy ways to do that. By law, they must follow through on every call, so they're gonna be sitting there listening to your conversation. Let's pretend this is the exit door. It could be the exit door from your office, and this is where that potentially violent person is gonna be sitting, okay? And if you don't know who that is, that's the male. Once you move in closer than three feet, you're getting in that private zone that causes anxiety. You don't have to be a shrink. Trust your gut. You're breaking off the situation and allowing for a cool down period, just like with children, it's a time out. Use what we call I statements. I'm feeling afraid, I'm feeling concerned. If it's your phone that you have set up in your office, they're gonna trace that number. If it's your cell phone, make sure your cell phone has a GPS and the GPS is on. All right, so let's uh, look at some of your questions here. How can the condition commonly known as Bridezilla be prevented and managed by a wedding planner. Your policy is you don't use the term, your employees don't use the term, and I don't mean just with clients or in your office, I mean throughout your life. We all wear how we feel on our faces and your clients are gonna pick this up. So if you can manage the expectations from the beginning, then you're already managing the frustration, the anxiety, the disappointment, etc., and your clients are gonna be more happy, your job is gonna go better, First of all, you want to not 
promise perfection. You want to let people know that that's just not possible. And you listen to what your client has to say, you're going to know if something's way over the top because you want to reconfirm that you're both on the same sheet of music. I would strongly recommend that after you've got that together, lock it in with dollars. And when you've done that, when you looked at those stressors with the individual, then you want to look at determining which ones that you can help them deal with. We're going to go over in a minute something that I like to call erase. And um, that's a, something that you're going to keep in your pocket. Write it down on a card, put it in your wallet or your purse. And before you go in a meeting, look at it and remind yourself what the E-R-A-S-E -E stands for. So have your ally set up. That can be ushers, groomsmen, your employees, even venue associates. This is not a negotiation. You will be giving me your keys, you will not be receiving any more drinks, and you'll be getting in the cab that I've called for you and leaving this event. Uh, why don't we take a quick break here and then uh, reconvene in a couple of minutes? Thanks.